Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Nat Me, and today we begin a new region of your lower limb, which is the leg. So, what is the leg? The leg is the part of your lower limb that lies between the knee joint and the ankle joint. We will discuss the superficial fascia, the deep fascia, and the compartments of the leg. So, let's go ahead and get started with the superficial fascia first. What's important in superficial fascia of the leg is the fact that the superficial fascia of the leg contains cutaneous nerves that basically carry, give you sensory supply in the skin of the leg. Then we have the cutaneous veins. These are very important. These are the great saphenous and the short saphenous vein. So let's go ahead and begin the discussion by the major veins of your leg, which are also the veins of the lower limb. So let's suppose that this is the leg, here is your knee joint and here is your ankle joint. So this is the big toe. So always remember in the lower limb, the big toe is the medial side, while the small toe is the lateral side. That is one important thing to know. So what happens is the great saphenous vein is a more medial vein, while the short saphenous vein or the small saphenous vein is a lateral vein. So what happens is basically these veins begin from a dorsal venous arch. The dorsal venous arch lies on the dorsum of the foot. This is also important part that the dorsum of the foot is your upper part of the foot. And beneath the dorsum or the lower part of the foot is known as the plantar part of the foot or you can even call it the sole of the foot. So the dorsal venous arch is similar to your uh, hand which had a dorsal venous arch. So dorsal venous arch is formed. The dorsal venous arch receives tributaries of four dorsal metatarsal veins which are basically going to be coming from dorsal digital veins of your each toe. All right. However, the tributary of the medial side of the great toe and tributary of the lateral side of the great toe are yet to be made. So in the medial side of the great toe is going to be the medial marginal vein which is going to be draining your deoxygenated blood from the medial side of your big toe. This is known as the medial marginal vein. The medial marginal vein is going to be involved in formation of saphenous vein. How? Well, the medial marginal vein, as it runs, it joins the medial end of the dorsal venous arch to form your great saphenous vein. And the great saphenous vein then runs upwards in front of what? the medial malleolus. Now, what is the medial malleolus? You all remember the medial malleolus is the lower end of the tibia, which was projecting downwards from the rest of the bone. So the great saphenous vein runs anterior to this medial malleolus. And then it runs on the medial surface of your entire tibia bone. As we all know, it's the medial bone. It runs medial to this bone. Then it reaches the medial border of the tibia. And then finally, in the upper part of the leg, it turns backwards and goes to the back of the leg. So this is the origin course and the root of the great saphenous vein. Now let's go ahead and talk about the short saphenous vein or the small saphenous vein. The small saphenous vein begins on the lateral side of the little toe and from here it drains blood and goes all the way here, lateral marginal vein. And similar to this side, the lateral marginal vein joins with the extreme lateral end of the dorsal venous arch to form the short saphenous vein. All right. And here lies the lateral malleolus. The difference between here is that the short saphenous vein passes behind the lateral malleolus and enters the back of the leg. The rest of the course of short saphenous vein will be discussed in the back of leg because that's all for its course in the anterior part of the leg. So these were the basic veins, cutaneous veins of the superficial fascia of the leg. Now let's go ahead and discuss the next part of the superficial fascia of the leg, which is the cutaneous innervation. Now this is very important because it is necessary to know what supplies which area of the leg and it can get quite confusing. However, I will once again make it easy for you. So this is the dorsum of the foot. This is the medial side. This is the lateral side. So let's suppose this is the ankle joint all right these are it is represented by the malleoli all right so what happens is what supplies your entire leg well there is let's talk about the medial side first 
on the medial side of your entire leg up to the ball of great toe or the base of the great toe the supply of the skin is via the saphenous nerve and saphenous nerve is derived from the posterior division of your femoral nerve if you remember the nerve of the anterior compartment of your thigh it gives an infrapatellar branch which supplies the skin over the ligamentum patellae and then it itself saphenous nerve is going to run in front of the great saphenous vein and is going to supply your entire medial side of the leg the medial border of the dorsum of the foot and it is going to supply up to the base or the ball of big toe all right that means it does not supply the toe itself then we have the lateral side what about the lateral side what supplies the lateral side well it's divided into an upper third and a lower third the lateral side of your leg is supplied in its upper two thirds by the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf where is this nerve coming from it is coming from the common peroneal nerve now what is the common peroneal nerve the sciatic nerve in the popliteal fossa divided into the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve the common peroneal nerve anything related to the lateral side of your leg is known as peroneal or the fibular so pero common peroneal nerve began at the posterolateral aspect of the fibular neck we've talked about this before then the common peroneal nerve gave a branch called the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf now let's talk about the lower side of the leg this lower side is supplied by the superficial peroneal nerve now where is the superficial peroneal nerve coming from the superficial peroneal nerve is a branch of the common peroneal nerve so the common peroneal nerve once it arises from the sciatic nerve it goes to posterolateral aspect of the fibular neck where it terminates by dividing into a superficial and a deep branch superficial and a deep peroneal nerve the superficial peroneal nerve is going to supply your lower third of the leg in its lateral part and it's going to supply entire dorsum of the foot except for the parts that are going to be supplied by the other nerves all right then we have the sural nerve the sural nerve if you guys remember we've talked about how it began from the tibials sural branch and the common peroneal sural branch the sural nerve is a cutaneous nerve now this accompanies the short saphenous vein which is unlike saphenous nerve which is accompanying the great saphenous vein sural nerve is going to supply the lower third of the back of the leg and the entire lateral border of the dorsum of the foot up to the tip of the little toe and now what is left is the deep peroneal nerve the deep peroneal nerve supplies the first interdigital cleft of the foot the first inter what is interdigital cleft digit meaning two digits and di between the digits first and second this is the interdigital cleft which is the first interdigital cleft the skin over the first interdigital cleft is supplied by the deep peroneal nerve and finally the medial 3 and 1/2 distal digits are supplied by the medial plantar nerve the lateral one and a half part of the digits is supplied by the lateral plantar nerve so that was all you needed to know for your cutaneous supply let's go through this again the entire medial side of your leg and dorsum of the foot in its medial border along till the a ball of the great toe is supplied by the saphenous nerve the upper part of the lateral side of the leg in its upper two third is supplied by the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf which is a branch of common peroneal nerve then we have the lateral border of the foot and the back of the leg is being supplied by the sural nerve then we have the superficial peroneal nerve supplying your lower half of the leg along with the entire dorsum of the foot except for the part supplied by other nerves the first interdigital cleft is getting supplied by the deep peroneal nerve of the common peroneal nerve and finally the digit digits in their distal parts 3 and 1/2 are being supplied by medial plantar nerve and lateral 1 and 1/2 being supplied by lateral plantar nerve so that was all you needed to know for the superficial fascia of the leg in the next video we'll talk about the deep fascia and the compartmentalization of your leg thank you so much for watching